Hi, I'm Bex from the Tiny Fibre Studio podcast and this is week four of the 51 Yarns Spin Along that is being run by Ply Magazine. This is a series of videos that I'm doing that corresponds with that spin along. All the details for the spin along are going to be in a link in the description below. So feel free to go and have a look at the upcoming topics. And you'll also find all of the information in there about how you enter the spin along in order to try and win yourself a subscription to Ply Magazine for a year. There's one of those being given away each week. So get spinning and hopefully you'll be lucky and get yourself a year subscription. I am not affiliated with Ply Magazine or sponsored by them in any way, shape or form. I just find them a really useful resource, particularly for things like this project that I'm going to talk about in this episode. This particular video is not going to be or include a how to or sort of tutorial section because I've literally only just done one of those. I'll put a link up here. I'll also put a link in the description and also at the end of the video so that you've got several different ways of finding your way to that tutorial if you would like to see it. But what I did want to discuss in this episode is the what and the why of spinning singles. First of all, spinning singles is the basis of everything that we do in spinning. We can't have applied yarn without first of all spinning the singles and it's also the way that I introduce people to spinning if they see me spinning and they want to find out about what it is that I'm doing and they want to see the process I basically hand them a little bit of fiber and I go okay well you know grab both ends of it and pull and see what happens and they quickly realize that of course it just kind of falls apart and then I'll get them to just put literally one or two twists in and get them to do the same thing. And of course, even just that very small amount of twist is enough to hold it together. And then all I need to explain from there is just that the machine or the spindle that I'm using is what's putting the twist in and I'm just keeping feeding new yarn to it so that the twist has somewhere else to go. Specifically, this spin long week talks about low twist singles, which I take to mean non-energised singles. Non-energised singles won't slant your knitting or distort your weaving. So that's basically how I would define the low twist singles. If you're looking for a good starting point, um, if you're a technical spinner, there is an article in this issue of Ply Magazine. There's actually going to be a couple of articles I'm going to talk about in here, but this issue of Ply Magazine, which was the winter 2015 one, has a great article by Elizabeth Watt, which starts on page 34. And it's a series of experiments in which she does lots of different singles. She does a fine, a DK and a bulky weight. And she's basically created this incredible table that gives you all of the information about the specifics of those yarns so that you have a starting point to go to if you want to. If you're not a technical spinner, I would probably recommend just putting as much twist in as your yarn needs to hold together and no more. You might need to do a little bit of experimenting to see where that sits for you. Um, but that's how I would define a low twist singles. The next thing is why, why do we spin low twist singles? What are the advantages of it? First advantage might well be that you might have some fiber that you've picked because you really love the colors and you love, maybe it's a gradient and you want to make sure that you get that gradient exactly as it is in that hand painted yarn. Spinning it as a singles allows you to do that really easily without having to think about how the ply might affect it. So if you take something like a gradient yarn as an example, you could split your yarn in half and spin it as a two ply or split it into thirds and split it as a three ply. But there's always the risk that one of your plies might be spun slightly thicker or thinner than the others. And therefore it might kind of graduate in a slightly different way. If you wanted to avoid that completely and not run that risk, then you could spin it as a singles yarn. Um, you could also spin it as a chain ply. That's another option that would be well worth considering. But maybe you don't have enough to do a three ply or a chain ply. So, you know, 
there are always decisions to be made. Another reason would be to try to make the most of some fiber. So if you only have a relatively small amount of that fiber and you want to make a nice long yarn from it enough to do something specific with and you're not quite sure whether you've got enough, spinning singles might be a good option. That's actually the reason that I chose to do these yarns as singles because I had hand dyed the fibre and I, I wasn't totally sure that I was going to get enough out of them as a two ply. I didn't really want to be playing yarn chicken because having hand dyed them myself, the possibility of getting the same colour again, exactly the same colour, is pretty slim. So I didn't want to run out of yarn, therefore I chose to do them as a singles for that reason because there's only one ply and therefore it's just going to go further. The other thing is the speed of spinning singles. Because you're putting less twist in, um, it goes a little bit quicker, plus you don't have the plying to do as well. So the whole process completes a lot quicker than spinning a plied yarn. So speed can be a really important factor. It's also just really lovely and soft and squishy and smooshy and that's something that you know you can get with a ply yarn but it's a little bit more tricky you have to exactly balance the singles twist and the ply twist spinning low twist singles you can automatically get a very nice soft squishy lovely yarn that might be what you're looking for there are also lots of fun things that you can do in terms of texture when you're spinning a single. So you can make a, a slub yarn where you have sections of the yarn that are a lot thicker than others. Um, lots of stuff that you can do with playing around with texture in your singles spun yarns. Finally, there is a downside to spinning singles, which is the potential durability of a single yarn being less than applied yarn. It's basically kind of received wisdom that singles yarns are less durable and more prone to abrasion and pilling and so on than other types of yarns. I think that has an enormous amount to do with the type of fibre that you use. If you were using something like Merino, you could expect a lot of pilling and a lot of uh, abrasion on it because it's a shorter staple length, it's a finer fibre, it's just not built to withstand as much wear as something like a Lester Longwall or a Wensleydale or something like that. Interestingly, there is another article in that Ply Magazine issue by Grace Shalom Hopkins, who did this experiment where she knitted two socks, one with a plied yarn, one with singles yarn, made from the same fibre that she tan spun, and then she wore them for a month to see what the resistance to abrasion was like. And they were pretty much the same. However, as she states herself in that article, she did use Gotland, which is a very abrasion resistant fibre. It's a very strong fibre and it's a fairly long fibre. And so it has all the characteristics that would make it a more sturdy yarn in the first place. It would be interesting to see what would happen with that experiment if it was done with something like Merino. Um, finer, shorter staple length, more likely to cause wear, excess wear. She also washed them fairly vigorously to bring them back to their original size after two weeks. So again, that could have affected the wear. It would be interesting to experiment and I'm certainly interested to see what the wear is like with these yarns once I've made my doodler shawl. Um, because it's a shawl it's not going to be getting a huge amount of uh, abrasion or you know wear and tear, it's not like I'm walking around with it on my feet. One thing that you can do which will help the strength of your yarn is to consider finishing them in an alternating hot and cold bath. So what I did with these, because I, I wanted to make sure that they were structurally sound and as abrasion resistant as I could make them, was to dunk them in very, very hot water for 10 minutes or so, and then start alternating between hot and cold. Um, 
that way you get to a point where the fibers are just starting to stick together and you almost have to sort of peel the strands of yarn apart that's where you stop before you start actually felting your yarn which would be a problem and hopefully that is going to give it a little bit more resistance to abrasion i'm kind of expecting a little bit of pilling from this um, but as i say for a shawl it doesn't really see that much in the way of abrasion or you know rubbing against itself or other things that much so um, I would say that that's quite a good use for a single yarn. So there we go, that's a few thoughts that I had about low twist singles yarn. As I mentioned at the beginning, I do have a tutorial video that I've already shot for singles that is edited, it's up on my channel right now. So I will pop another link up here. There'll be a link in the description and there'll be a link at the end of the video as well to point you in the right direction to find that. I really hope that this video has been useful or interesting in some way for you. Um, if it has been, please give me a thumbs up, let me know that you liked it, leave me a comment. And if you haven't done so already, I would love it if you would subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of these 51 Yarns videos. In between now and next week, you can find me on Instagram as Tiny Fibre Studio and on Ravelry, I'm Ibex. Hope this was useful and I'll see you again next week.